In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step by step a case study breaking down how I made over $50,000 in profit in just one month, my first year with Amazon Online Arbitrage. Also wanna mention with Q4, the holidays and Black Friday fast approaching, now is the perfect time to apply for my coaching program if you're interested in having direct access to me throughout all of Q4 to maximize results. So I'm gonna leave the application link down below in the description and let's get right into the video. Q4 case study, how I made $50,000 in one month. My first year selling Amazon, we can see is about 308 uh, in total for that December of 2021, so a couple years ago. Right there, so I'm gonna go through uh, how I found success my first year, the micro optimizations necessary for fast success, the key to actually getting sales fast, going hard on Black Friday, as well as mistakes I made right here. And we can see the trend right here, the biggest days right around like 25, I think December 9th of that year was 27K right there. So you can have like some huge, huge days because you guys got to consider nine months before this, I had legitimately never sold a name brand product on Amazon. Okay, so finding fast success right here. So here's the walkthrough of my first year. So I got started in February and initially found some proof of concept. That's when I met Garrett, Danny, and Jake, who I do the Buy Box Bandits with, and we really built a group chat together and started talking every day, sharing leads, and that was so huge, right? And immediately in March of that year, I did about 30K in revenue the second month. That was all FBM. We were doing a lot of bolos, Air Force Ones. There wasn't a lot of competition on stuff back then. And then the next uh, the next month, April, is about 40,000, just continuing doing more of what I was already doing, getting better at it, finding new sites, new angles. And then I went on vacation for May. And because I was only doing all FBM, I wasn't really able to do much that month. And then it was back on track. And then June and July were big because those months were when I was really starting to see the fruits of my labor. I was finding core suppliers that I really liked. I was having success FBMing stuff. And then in early August, I went to the Miami Sellers Conference and saw all these huge sellers that I had learned from on social media the past couple years and saw that they were no different than me and that they were doing these huge months and there was, there was legitimately nothing holding me back except me not doing it, basically. So I, I got home and I'm still all FBM at this point and I just immediately shot out of a gun uh, during back to school that year and did 100K in two weeks right there. And then I mainly shifted over to starting to do FBA in September because it got, har got harder non-seasonal times to get the buy box FBM. Right there, October, November, or uh, September and October were pretty straightforward, just about 100,000. I was, I was shifting over to mainly doing FBA at that point. And then in November of that year, that's when demand really starts to spike up. The nice thing is I'm filming this in mid-October, so that's pretty soon. You can really start to see demand start to increase, competition starts to decrease, prices start to go up. That's also when we have Black Friday, and Black Friday is huge for buying inventory crazy cheap and then selling it in December. So December was at $50,000 dollar profit month. November is right around like 30, 35,000 in profit right there. So incredible stuff for just my first year in the business. And the key was that I just slowly started going deeper and deeper on products. And then in December, prices are through the roof. Competition's really low because there's not really time for people to FBA products. So if you can FBM products, you get a ton of extra buy box share. And you're also buying stuff cheaper than you ever can because there's a ton of holiday sales and Black Friday to Cyber Monday specifically. You can buy inventory dirt cheap and then sell it at the peak in December. That's what other people aren't doing. That's why the value on stuff goes down in January because everyone's FBAing the stuff they bought during Black Friday because they're scared of FBM and that doesn't make any sense to me, right? I want you guys to be comfortable FBMing if you want to because you can make you know a lot of extra cash doing that stuff. All right there, okay. So this is something a lot of people won't tell you about, but this is where all the money is made, right? It, all the money is in the micro optimizations, aka trying, hard, trying harder than everyone else, right? Listing items as soon as possible when they touch down, FBM. Retail arbitrage, deals and pickups, right? Take an extra time to go to your Nike out and scan a bunch of stuff with the seller amp app, right there. Doing pickup orders at retail arbitrage, taking the time and going ahead and getting something in same day, rather than ordering it from Kohl's and it taking four to seven days to arrive, going and picking it up same day and then replenishing it same day, right there. So crucial during December if you wanna see these big results. Right there, updating your repricer multiple times a day. This is something I've seen a ton from people who have big results and I don't see super often from people who don't. Right there, this is crucial when going deep because it's important to make sure you're op you have optimal pricing on these listings to protect them over the long term and making sure you're also maximizing profit in the short term, which comes from raising your minimum price if something's selling incredibly well for you and considering lowering your price if something isn't selling well for you and being diligent and active in here all the time. If you guys don't have repricer set up, but you have five or 10 ASINs and you're really serious about this, I'd really recommend going down the link in the description and getting a free trial of BQL. I also have a free BQL tutorial that's down there as well because you're gonna wanna do this because you're gonna be competing against people that are using 
Read prices right there. Continuing with getting buy box share, having your handling time optimize, optimize, which is typically zero day right now, if possible, and then eventually one and two day in December when demand picks up and your account's established in the buy box algorithm, as well as having your shipping templates optimized and charging free shipping for FBM, and then charging a lot for expedited next day or stuff like that, just because obviously to justify the extra effort of shipping stuff out incredibly quick and the high cost of doing that, you need to have your shipping settings optimize another really sauce thing is mul is listings with multiple listings when you're doing fbm occasionally or just in general you're going to see products on amazon that for whatever reason have multiple listings on amazon i don't know why that's a thing it just is and you can sell on both of those when you're doing fbm so that's an incredibly important thing that a lot of advanced sellers understand that a lot of newer sellers don't understand that you can have you know 10 of this book sitting right here and if there's two amazon listings next to you you can have five and five listed on one and easily switch back and forth between the two right there okay black friday so black friday is coming up it's the best time of the year to buy inventory right between now and then you want to be identifying your favorite sites to buy the way you're going to do that is not by manual sourcing it's going to be by doing a lot of reverse sourcing and starting to see patterns with these different websites these different discount codes and then during black friday you're going to hammer your favorites with a probably a lot of test orders and then you got to understand your money is going to be made replenishing deep on proven products right the last thing you want to do when you're doing a business is take unnecessary risk that you don't have to and a lot of you guys ask me about going deep on products and i think it really only makes sense to you when something's already really performed well for you and then you also have to understand how important the 80 20 rule is and understanding that 20 percent of your products are going to create 80 percent of your profit uh, 20% of your suppliers are going to produce 80% of your results, right? The, the small subset of inputs that are most effective for you are going to produce the vast majority of outputs and it's important to be able to identify those and really know about them moving forward. Right there, some mistakes I made my first year, so obviously, you know, do your own research on any stuff, but I was using personal credit instead of business credit, which was a big mistake in terms of messing up my personal credit score. That's why my January of that year was lower because I had to pause spending to move everything over to business credit to optimize my credit score. Um, it's a good idea to learn some stuff about business credit. Luckily, there's people that have actual qualifications to talk about that um, stuff and everything I was able to, you know, learn from on YouTube and such. Um, definitely not going deep enough on products, and that was just because I was new, which is completely normal, right? The last thing you want to do is take a lot of unnecessary risk right there, so I wasn't going deep enough in items on looking hindsight that I should have, and then next year I was able to do almost double what I did in terms of sales and profit, and that was a result of going deeper on items. Getting distracted and not staying focused. For some reason in the FBA community, there's like this crazy idea that you're only supposed to sell toys in December when... Uh, toys, Amazon sells a lot of it themselves. So you have to compete with not only third-party sellers, but also Amazon. But if you want to sell products Amazon doesn't sell, you only have to compete with third-party sellers. That's what I want to do. Anything that's giftable, I made a whole video on what products you should buy for Q4 is going to perform well during December. Luckily, with SellerF and Keepa data, you can see exactly what has sold well in the past, what's gone up in price. So you can just target those products and have big spreadsheets of those ready with seller amp and then another mistake was just not understanding restock limits and it really screwed me that year not being able to fba a lot of products just due to storage limits with amazon which used to be a lot more of an issue than i think they are there's a chance november 1st amazon nukes restock limits again which they did the past years i kind of don't feel like they're going to this year but we're going to find out so that's why i bought 500 units yesterday it's my prep so i'm going to buy a couple thousand more coming up just to make sure i have that optimized and locked in right there so i hope this q4 case study was helpful for you guys i'm gonna have daily youtube live streams going through uh the end of the year i don't want anyone left behind if you guys got any questions please let me know i'm here to help on this stuff and it's super super crucial to understand we have so much good opportunity to take advantage of the next 60 days through the end of the year and even in january stuff's popping as well and i want to make sure you guys are able to take as much advantage of that as possible so if i can be a resource to you let me know any questions comment shoot me a dm on twitter or instagram and let's get after it guys Thanks for watching.